Outlaw Run is located at Silver Dollar City and is debatably the best ride in the park. Now it goes back and forth between that and Time Traveler. I'm not going to get into that today, but today I wanted to give you my full review of Outlaw Run specifically, um, and in the future I plan to do a Time Traveler video. So like with most things, I want to talk about the theming first because that's what you notice first. So this is themed to the Pony Express and it has a very Western movie vibe, which is honestly probably my favorite in the park. Um, the music sounds like you just walked out of a Western movie. They have a stagecoach out there. Um, they have a little facade around the building. Um, it is a great theme. I wish that they had more rides that were th a similar theme to this that really just give you the essence of being in a Western movie. And as you're walking up to the ride, the path frames the lift hill and the first drop really nicely, but the ride takes place majority in the woods, so that is about all that you can see of the coaster. You might be able to see some of the barrel roll, depending on um, what time of year it is, if all the trees are dead or if they're fully grown, but it, the path frames the lift hill and first drop super nicely, so even before you get to the ride, you're getting a picturesque view of it. So after you walk through the queue and you get to the station, you see the trains, and the trains look similar to the stagecoach that is sitting out front. Not exactly the same, but they give off a western vibe, like everything with this ride. Um, and so you hop in, you board your quote-unquote stagecoach, and then um, as you're dispatched, they play some pretty awesome music, and then you begin climbing the lift hill. And now that we're actually on the ride, let's talk about what the ride entails. So this ride is honestly one of the craziest, and this is the coaster that got me into appreciating coasters from an enthusiast perspective. So I rode this in its opening year, and it was butter smooth. Um, it was honestly shocking, and I just remember the first time that I rode it, my hands were on the lap bar the entire time just holding on for dear life, and I had no idea what happened when I got off, I just knew that it was absolutely crazy. I remember the first drop took my breath away and I forgot the rest of it, except for the barrel roll at the end because I thought we weren't going to make it through the second one. But now let's actually talk about the ride. Um, so you start up the lift hill and then you go into a bit of a pre-drop and that takes you into the main drop. And this main drop is pretty steep, um, especially when it first opened, I was shocked with how steep it was. And after the drop, you start to bank left, and then as you're ascending up a big hill, you bank right and go into your first inversion. So it whips you from your left side to your right side, and then upside down, and then it does the same thing in reverse as you're coming back down. Then the ride tosses you into an airtime-filled S-bend as you bank from the left side to the right side. Um, and that'll take you into an airtime hill where the camera is, so be sure to smile at this point. Following the airtime hill with the camera, you are um, banked hard left, almost 90 degrees on your left side, and you go up and then you dive through the lift supports, which is a pretty cool moment. Um, and it's a bit of a head chopper effect because you feel like you're going to lose your hands there, honestly. And following that dive down where you're on your left side, you quickly bank to your right and do a wave turn. And the first time I rode this, I got off, I had no recollection of this, and then I hear people talking about it, and I had no idea that it even existed on the ride. I was just in shock that first time I rode it. Um, but then I did pay attention for it after that because I wanted to know what it was. But you literally turn on your side and you go over what is an airtime hill, but it's all done at a 90 degrees angle, and you're on your right side this time um, and it's a pretty crazy element um, filled with lots of airtime and then following that wave turn you go into an airtime hill and then I believe you go into the double barrel roll. Now I mentioned it earlier but um, the first time I wrote it I didn't think we were going to make it through that second barrel roll. As you're doing this you're actually ascending up the side of a mountain and so you start to lose some momentum and these are really heart-lined, super tight. Um, they're taken at a slow enough speed that you get some nice 
hang time, but then also fast enough that the pacing of the ride is still really good. Um, and then you roll your way into the brake run. Um, and it's a great way to finish out the ride. It really ends with a bang, that's for sure. It is a bit of a short ride, but the elements that they are able to pack in is absolutely crazy. Um, this was Rocky Mountain Construction's first ground up coaster, and also the first one that they used their own trains on. And they knocked it out of the park with this one. I think it is a phenomenal layout, and given all the terrain they had to work with, they used it amazingly well. And for RMC's first ground up coaster with no existing supports, the fact that they were able to make something this crazy um, was actually pretty cool. Um, and I would be interested in seeing if it gets the same treatment as Lightning Rod is with the iBox track. I don't think the ride is necessarily super rough, but uh, if you do ride it enough, you might get a headache. I experience that fairly often since I like riding this ride. Something else to note is that this ride also seems to never really have a long line. And I think part of it might just be the fact that it's tucked in the back and it's a wooden coaster and people usually assume that wooden coasters are rough and not super fun. So this ride, for whatever reason, doesn't really ever have a line, which is the GP is missing out. That's all I have to say, because this ride is amazing. So I think that wraps up my review of this ride. Um, what do you think of this ride? Have you been able to ride it? Um, let me know if I missed anything. Um, I would just love to hear your thoughts, because this is one of my favorite rides at the park. I'm not sure... I'm not sure between Time Traveler or Outlaw Run. Honestly, I go back and forth. But uh, let me know what you prefer. Um, and be sh sure to um, like and subscribe and all that other fun stuff that YouTubers tell you to do. Um, thank you for watching. God bless. Go live an enthused life.